Does IVF cause menopause or hurt your ovarian function in any way? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I am a fertility doctor and I talk about IVF almost every day. And I am here to provide some education about what fertility is, what you should know if you're trying to get pregnant and what you should know if you have infertility or are going through fertility treatments. Today I'm talking all about IVF process and one of the common myths, does IVF cause menopause? In order to understand that question, you have to understand really quickly what IVF is and what we're trying to do and how the ovaries work. And I'm going to break it down to you in a very quick video. First of all, though, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. This channel is growing and it's how we spread our message and share more fact-based education about our bodies with more people. And we know that people are struggling with fertility and the more that you can know and advocate for yourself, the better. So this myth got a lot of wind when Kourtney Kardashian went through IVF and ended up saying IVF put her in menopause, which is not a factual statement. So really quickly, what is menopause? Menopause is ovarian failure. So that means your ovaries are no longer making hormones and making eggs. The way that I like to think about the ovaries is that if you can imagine inside the ovary is a vault where all your eggs are kept. When you're born, this vault is full. You actually have the most eggs inside when you're 20 week fetus inside your mother. You have six to seven million eggs. You lose eggs every single month. And the more that are in the vault, the more that you lose. So by the time you're born, you actually only have one to two million eggs remaining. This egg count drops over time. And essentially when the vault is empty, that is when you're in menopause. Everybody's born with a different number and runs up at a different rate. Certain things can decrease the number of eggs you have. Things like smoking cigarettes, environmental toxins, endometriosis, chemotherapy. So there's definitely exposures that can make you run out of eggs faster. Other things can be genetics and autoimmune disease. So some of these are factors you control in your environment and some of them are things you have no control over at all. But everybody has eggs, everybody runs out of them. If we think about how the ovary works, every month you have a group of eggs come out, each egg grows inside a follicle, and this is what we consider your antral follicle count or the group of eggs that you have available. What is going to happen is the brain is gonna send out FSH or follicle stimulating hormone, FSH works to stimulate a follicle to grow. As that egg grows, it makes estrogen, and that's the one you ovulate. The rest of the eggs die, and the next month you have another group. When you have more eggs, more come out. So the average 30-year-old's gonna have around 20 eggs coming out of the vault. And as the vault gets emptier over time, fewer eggs are gonna come out. So the average 40-year-old's gonna have eight to 10 eggs coming out of the vault. So people have different numbers. When we're evaluating ovarian reserve, this is what we are checking, how many eggs are outside the vault. That is important in IVF outcomes, not as a cause of your infertility. Meaning, if you have a low egg count, you still have the same age-related chance of getting pregnant as somebody with a high egg count. And that's because your body doesn't care there's 10 eggs or 30 eggs. If you ovulate one per month, you have the same odds of getting pregnant as an age-related peer. But when we do IVF, what we're doing is getting one month's group of eggs all to grow. So I am going to, for example, stimulate your ovaries to have 20 eggs grow, all of the eggs that are outside the vault, instead of just the one that would naturally be selected by the normal brain and ovary communication system. So the brain sends out follicle stimulating hormone, FSH stimulates a follicle to grow. As the follicle grows, the granulosa cells make estrogen. Estrogen tells the brain there's an egg growing and the brain sends out less FSH. This check and balance is very intact because your body doesn't want you to have 20 babies at one time. Humans shouldn't be having litters. So the brain and ovary, I always say they're like best friends, but they live in different states before the invention of FaceTime. So they can't see each other. They just can communicate on the phone. And that is what your hormones are doing, communicating feedback back and forth. We want to break up this connection when we do IVF. So number one, how we are going to do that is typically overriding the system. And that's usually what I consider suppression and then stimulation. The suppression can and should vary based on your clinical scenario. Suppression is going to stop the brain from sending out FSH. So this could be birth control pills, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, 
medication called Lupron, even ovulation blockers. These things work by telling the brain to stop sending out FSH. We'll use the birth control pill, for example. If you're taking the birth control pill constantly, the brain's never going to send out FSH. You have a group of eggs come out of the vault. There's no FSH. They all die because nothing is stimulated. The next month you have another group. However, if we suppress your body, get a group of eggs to come out of the vault, they don't see any FSH, so all those eggs are hungry and they open up their receptors. Then I come in with stimulation, which is high doses of FSH. I'm now giving you enough FSH to go fill up these receptors and override that normal check and balance that exists to just have you ovulate one egg at a time. And this is how we can get a nice synchronous cohort because truly I don't want just 20 eggs to grow. I'm trying to get the highest number of eggs growing together at the same rate to get them into that mature range. Now, the eggs that are out of the vault, you are going to lose them no matter what. We do not have a way yet to extend human fertility. There's no medication you can take that can pause it. As I said, if you're taking the birth control pills, you're still losing eggs those months, even if you're not ovulating. So IVF is just giving one month's group of eggs the opportunity to grow and be taken out of the body and fertilize and become an embryo versus what happens in nature, which is one ovulates, the rest die, next month another group. When somebody does multiple cycles, what you're essentially doing is getting the eggs from one month and then getting the eggs from the next month and then getting the eggs from the next month potentially. And this is a strategy, especially if somebody is older or somebody has a lower egg count because the two factors that dictate IVF success are how many eggs you get and how old you are. The older you are, the lower the egg count, the more eggs we need. I can't get them in a single cycle because I can't tap into the vault, so you might have to do back-to-back -back rounds. If somebody is older or they have low ovarian reserve, even if they're not old, somebody with severely diminished ovarian reserve, at some point, that number will go from critically low to nothing. And I have had patients in the context of cycles suddenly run out of eggs. It's like a light switch. It's going to happen. Just like when you go into menopause, at some point, the vault is empty. And IVF did not change the trajectory of that. It was just hopefully giving you an opportunity to use those eggs before you got to that time period. So IVF doesn't cause you to run out of eggs any faster. It doesn't cause you to go into menopause. If you do go into ovarian failure throughout the process, you were going to go into ovarian failure anyway. You just were aware of it because you were stimulating one month and then you can't the next. Again, everybody's going to go through that transition at some point. IVF doesn't change it. It doesn't change how your ovaries work, just stimulating more eggs in that month. However, the only other thing to know and why people sometimes say this is that the medication you take in the IVF process, sometimes one of the suppressive options is a medication called Lupron. And Lupron works to stop the brain from sending out FSH and LH. And if the brain doesn't send out those hormones, you're not growing an egg thus suppression, but you're also not making estrogen. And because the suppression is pretty profound, people can feel those low estrogen symptoms, sometimes quite severely. And this is usually before you start your stimulation and it can feel like menopause and it confuses people because then they hear this Kardashian thing and they're like, oh my gosh, did that happen to me? What that means is that when your body senses low estrogen, its response is to try to get there to be more. And if your brain doesn't have any FSH to send out because of this medication, you might start to experience some low estrogen symptoms because the female body likes estrogen. So you might have headaches, fatigue, insomnia, hot flashes, mood changes. They are all very short lived because once you start the stimulation meds and you grow the follicles, the follicles will make estrogen and then those low estrogen symptoms will go away. So if you're taking a medication called Lupron and you have some of those symptoms, you're not in menopause. Those are low estrogen symptoms. They're temporary. They will go away once the stem starts. So hopefully that cleared up a common myth about what happens when you go through IVF and helps you understand that IVF doesn't cause you to run out of eggs any faster and does not cause you to go into menopause. If you have other myths or questions about the IVF process that you want me to answer in a future video, please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to get to them. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.